Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Rembrandt Fernandez. Uh, I am a GA with the HPC team here at NMSU. Uh, and today we're going to be going over how to use the program MATLAB on the supercomputing cluster discovery. So we're going to, what we're going to be covering today is a little bit about how to use discovery. We're going to be going over um, the introduction on uh, what is MATLAB, how MATLAB works. We're going to be going over um, Discovery's uh, scheduler, Slurm, and why that's important when we're using MATLAB on Discovery. We're going to be going over um, how to submit MATLAB scripts both interactively and non-interactively. And we're going to be discussing a little bit about the program WinSCP and how that can help us use the supercomputing cluster discovery. So when, we're, so when we think about using MATLAB, why do we use MATLAB? We use MATLAB to try to process large amounts of data quickly instead of doing it by hand. So if I have a large array of data that I've taken from research or from previous experiments or whatnot, and I want to analyze it really quickly, I can use MATLAB as a way of taking those large arrays of data and processing that. Sometimes, however, when we're processing those huge arrays of data on a personal machine like our laptop or a home computer or a research computer, that can freeze up our computer sometimes if those arrays are really big. So we like to use a supercomputer sometimes to process arrays of data that's easier to handle when you have more computing power than that of a personal machine. So to start using MATLAB on Discovery, we need a couple things. First, we need to be onboarded to Discovery. So we've gone through the Canvas course of Discovery. We've uh, learned how to uh, connect with the VPN. We've learned how to use a terminal and all that good stuff. And we need to know a little bit about how to use MATLAB. So I'm, uh, in this workshop, we're going to be assuming that there's an intermediate knowledge in MATLAB here. Uh, and if you have any questions, again, just please raise your hand or ask in chat, and we'll be more than willing to answer. Uh, here's some reference documentation. So uh, the HPC team has been working very hard on a wiki page that kind of goes over a little bit everything uh, that has to do with the uh, high performance computing cluster discovery. So here, uh, here's some uh, helpful links that we can reference later on back in the workshop. Okay, so Slurm. So what is Slurm? So Slurm stands for Simple Linux Utility Resource Manager. And essentially what that means is that it takes anything that runs on the program Linux and goes, I'm going to schedule X amount of resources for you. So let's say I'm submitting a job to something um, that is using the, the that is using Linux as a uh, as a processing system, and I want to make sure that it is utilizing the correct resources and that it's not utilizing resources that's doing something else. Slurm is a really good way of doing that. Uh, the, mo the most common example of why Slurm is really important is when we use Discovery and we first log on. So whenever we're first logging on Discovery, we log on to something called the login node, which is what everybody utilizes to some extent. Slurm is really cool because it allows us to get off that login node and use a different part of Discovery so we're not taking a node that everybody else is relying on to do what we need to on Discovery. There's two methods of using Slurm on Discovery. So there's interactive mode, which is um, kind of hands-on. And when we're using Discovery, you can kind of see what you're doing a little more. And then there's non-interactive mode, which is kind of, in a way, uh, submitting an envelope of data and just giving it to the computer to process for you. So interactive mode is nice because it allows us to use uh, the supercomputer a lot more robust. You know, We kind of get to get our hands in there, You know, type some code out and we get to see those error messages as they appear. Well, in non-interactive mode, if we submit something, we have to wait for the whole process of what we submitted to go through before we can figure out exactly what went wrong. So it's nice if we have a preset um, batch of code that we already know is going to work and we want to use it later, non-interactive mode can really work for something like that. Uh, but first, we're going to use, uh, we're going to learn how to use discovery interactively. So to do that, I'm going to go on to a terminal window. It can be any terminal window that uh, you like. For um, Windows, it can be PuTTY. And for Mac OS or others, it can be an SSH terminal. Um, this is the on-demand uh, interface that Shin Dombo was talking about a little bit earlier. Um, this is still kind of in the beta stages, but we're going to be using it because it has a nice interface that we can display for this workshop. So here I am on the, uh, on the Discovery terminal. I'm just going to make my text a little bit bigger here. I'm going to log in. Cool. 
okay, there we go. So this is what happens when I first log on to Discovery. I am first logged on, and as we can see right here, there's something that says L1 here. This is notifying that I'm on the login node. So this is telling me, hey, you've just logged on, you're on the node that um, everybody first sees when they first log on to Discovery. So before I ever do anything interactively on Discovery, I want to get off of this node. So to do that, I'm going to type the srun command. So Slurm, that uh, utility manager that uh, kind of organizes Linux for us, um, this command helps us uh, use um, Discovery interactively. So I'm going to do dash n. Um, this is telling us uh, the number of uh, C or the number of nodes that we're going to be using, which is one for this workshop. And then I'm going to do dash C, which is the number of CPU threads that we're going to be using for this workshop, which is two. And then I'm going to be dedicating the memory that I'm going to be doing for this interactive job. So for this workshop, we're going to be dedicating two gigabytes of memory. Um, however, if I have something that's going to be a little bit more intensive, I might want to dedicate a little bit more memory to that. If you're ever wondering how much memory you want to dedicate to a job, you can always email hpc-team at nmsu.edu and we'd be more than willing to help you answer that question. I'm going to do dash P, which is telling me the kind of partition I'm going to be doing on my uh, interactive job, which is for this going to be normal. And typically we pick normal, but sometimes we can pick something else if we're doing something that's very specific. But for most jobs, normal works pretty well. And then for T, it's the time that I'm going to be doing. And for this workshop, we're going to be doing two and a half hours. So we're going to be doing two hours and 30 minutes in uh, zero seconds. And then here, I'm going to be doing um, PTY uh, forward slash bin forward slash bash. And this section right here, when I type it in to answer um, or when I'm, when I'm running Slurm interactively, this opens up something called the pseudo terminal. So this tells us, hey, we want to open up and use uh, Linux and uh, kind of getting our hands in there. So I'm going to submit that in. And as we can see, uh, oh, I forgot to type in A in bin bash. So see right here that that, that error gave me. So to fix that, I'm going to do my up arrow, which will get me to my last uh, code of line or my line of code that I typed. And I'm just going to go here and fix that real quick. So that's supposed to say bash right here. And there we go. So as we can see, we went off the login node, and now we're on a interactive node. And so here is where we get to do our fun stuff with MATLAB. So now that we're in discovery and we're off the login node and we can do things interactively, let's get MATLAB loaded onto our um, personal uh, cluster that we're using. So to do that, I'm going to see the versions of MATLAB I can load on. And to do that, I'm going to type module um, avail MATLAB. And so module avail will load any program that the supercomputing cluster has, and MATLAB is a specific program that we're loading here. So when I do that, it shows the different versions of MATLAB I can use on discovery. So for us, we typically like to stick with MATLAB 2018A or MATLAB 2020A, depending um, on what you like to use. However, the default that discovery uses is the most current version of MATLAB. For, so for this, it would be MATLAB 2020A. However, in the future, if we get a more current version of MATLAB, that will update accordingly. So to load MATLAB onto my personal cluster, I'm going to do module load and then MATLAB. And that will load MATLAB 2020A into my uh, module uh, list. So now that's done that, I can always check the list of modules I have loaded by going module list and it will tell me all the modules I can access currently. And right here is MATLAB 2020A. So from here, we're going to load MATLAB. And for that, we can just type MATLAB. And then to save resources on discovery, I'm going to load it with no display. So MATLAB on discovery has um, a default of loading a nice kind of um, uh, inter or interactive uh, face that we can see, but it's not necessary in order to run MATLAB code. So to save resources on discovery, I can type this no display command that can allow me to allocate resources to processing data. And so to do that, I'm going to type MATLAB no display. I'm going to hit enter. And this might take a second. Uh, if it does, don't be concerned. It usually takes a second for MATLAB to open. And so as we can see here, MATLAB has opened and it's going to look like this. And so here is a typical MATLAB terminal. So if I were to open MATLAB on my personal machine, and then you know if I was using a GUI, 
this is um, kind of similar to what I would see. So here I can use it like a calculator. So if I type two plus two, it'll give me four. And it works kind of with any code um, similarly. So I'm going to um, get out of MATLAB real quick so we can uh, show something else that we can do. Because next we're going to use MATLAB with pre-existing code. So let's say I had something I already uh, drafted on my personal machine, and I wanted to use it. Um, but it was just taking up too much resources on my computer. Well, the supercomputing cluster can take that code and process it here accordingly, and we don't actually have to open MATLAB to type that code in. So I'm going to get out of MATLAB by typing exit. And I'm going to make a new directory for this workshop. So for this, I'm going to type make directory, and I'm going to call this MATLAB workshop. Now, for the sake of this workshop, I already have this directory created, so I'm not going to actually type it. I'm not actually submit this command, but this is what I would do to make this directory. So next, I'm going to go to that directory. So to go to that directory, I'm going to do cd matlab workshop, and it'll take me to that directory. So from here, we're going to uh, create a nano file. Um, if you prefer a different kind of text editor, by all means, please use it. But for this, I'm going to be using nano. So I'm going to create a nano file called practice uh, one.m. So for MATLAB scripts and discovery, whenever we are wanting to use it, we have to save it as a .m file for MATLAB to recognize it as a code. So here I'm going to do nano practice one.m. And I'm going to type the following code. Here I've already typed it for the sake of this workshop, but um, if I hadn't typed this, I would have generated two random matrices, one that's a four by four, and one that's a four by one, and then I would have just multiplied the two together to get an output. So once I've typed this out, I'm just going to save it and then um, get back to my terminal window. So um, once again, I'm going to go back to nano practice one.m just to get back our uh, code back up. So I opening nano text editor and I'm naming this practice one.m and I generated the following code. So I'm gonna wait here for a second, see if everyone's okay, check the chat, and see if there's any questions. Okay, awesome. So we're gonna keep going. So I'm gonna exit out of here. And as we can see, we're back here. Okay. So now that we've created this nano file, we're going to use this code in MATLAB. So to do that, I'm going to run MATLAB again. Again, it's just, well, here. I'm going to clear this up real quick so it's not as messy. OK, cool. So now we're going to load MATLAB. So to do that, we're going to type MATLAB, and we're going to load it with no display again. Again, this might take a second. And we're going to run that code that we just made. So to do that, I'm going to do the run command. And I'm going to type practice1.m. And as we can see here, it produced the code that we made in the nano file. So here's our 4 by 4 matrix. Here's our 4 by one And here's the, uh, the uh, multiplied product of the two. So to so. Uh, this is really nice because if I have pre-existing MATLAB code in a, doc, um, in a text file or um, whatever, I can import that file into my personal directory on discovery using um, a program like WinSCP, which I'll talk about a little bit later. And then I can convert that file into a .m file and then run it in MATLAB accordingly. And so it's nice because you don't have to type your code in MATLAB completely. Um, you can actually do your code outside of ever having to open MATLAB to begin with, with the uh, batch command. So to do that, I'm going to exit out of MATLAB. I'm going to clear this window. I'm going to come back here. And instead of opening MATLAB, I'm going to run that exact same code of practice1.m. But instead, I'm going to use the batch command, which allows me to string multiple lines of code together. So to do that, I'm going to type MATLAB. But instead of doing no display, I'm going to put batch here. And this tells Discovery that I'm not wanting to open up MATLAB. I just want to batch all of this code I have together and process it without ever opening MATLAB 
to work with the terminal window. So to do that, um, I'm going to do batch and I'm going to do an open double quotation mark. I'm going to type my code, practice one, and I'm going to exclude the .m. For the batch command, we don't need .m in our file names. And if I ever wanted to string something else to this, I could type a comma here and put another set of code there. So I could either put another uh, code file or I could actually input a command for MATLAB to do like two plus two, and it would do that. So uh, I'm just going to type it like so and hit enter. Again, this might take a second. And as we can see, discovery has processed uh, this code that I've made through MATLAB without ever opening MATLAB to begin with. And so this is really nice if I already know that my code works, but I just don't have that computing resource power and I want to use it somewhere else, I can do something like this without having to open up MATLAB completely. So another way we can utilize MATLAB on discovery now that we've learned how to do this interactively is non-interactively. So I've discussed how to make code accordingly on a nano file, and then to take that nano file and process it through MATLAB by opening MATLAB on discovery, and then use, and then processing that file with the batch command. To, there's another way of doing this non-interactively by submitting something called a shell file. So to start this out, I'm gonna make sure I'm in my directory MATLAB workshop. So I'm just gonna do my print my working directory. And as we can see, home user MATLAB workshop, good to go. And now I'm going to nano a file that I'm going to name submit. And instead of doing .m, I'm going to type .sh. And this tells me that I'm nanoing a shell file. So I'm gonna open this up. And as we can see here, there's a lot going on here. Um, whenever we want to use a shell file, there's a handy dandy tool. If I go to slurm.nmsu.edu, it'll direct me to this uh, handy dandy helper where I can actually uh, type or where I can actually uh, customize what I want to put in here and it will give me the output that I want. So for this, I'm going to name this job submit. I'm going to keep that normal, keep my partition normal. For the number of nodes, I'm going to leave blank. For the number of tasks, I'm going to put it as one. For a number of CPU threads, I will keep at one. For my memory, I'm gonna set it to two gigabytes, like I had it before in my interactive job. For my GPUs per node, that's going to say the same. And for my time, I'm going to do two, hour, or, uh, two hours and 30 minutes, or actually, well, for interactive job, we're gonna make this 10 minutes. And then I'm going to have this email me at the beginning and the end. And what's really nice about this uh, tool is that it will tell you when your job has begun and when it has ended. So I'm gonna type my email here, but your email it would just be whatever your personal email is. And then I would take everything here, copy this, and paste it directly here. And so once I have everything and I pasted it here, I would then uh, say what modules I wanna use in my job and then what code I would like to use. So for the modules, I'm using MATLAB. Uh, here I said module load MATLAB. I specified what version of MATLAB here, just because whenever you're doing something as a shell file, it's really nice for discovery to see that you're specifying what you're wanting to submit to discovery. And so here are my uh, modules I'm loading. And then here is uh, the code that I used uh, before. So remember when I use that batch command without ever having to open MATLAB, here I'm doing the exact same thing, but I'm having it in a shell file do it for me. And so I'm gonna type it right here. I'm gonna get out of here. And then I've made my shell file. So from here, we're going to submit this as a, uh, as a batch for uh, discovery to process. So to do that, I'm going to type sbatch and then submit.sh. And this will tell Discovery that it needs to process this job for me. So as we can see here, Discovery has recognized that I've submitted the shell file that I've made for Discovery. 
and it is processing it accordingly. And if I want to check um, where my uh, where my file is in being processed, I can type the command sq. And it, and then following uh, my user. Oh, well, we'll just type sq. Mm, here it is. Here's my, uh, oh, here is, um, here's my interactive uh, uh, task that I ran on Discovery when I first started. As we can see, I'm 12 minutes and 49 seconds into it. Um, but I don't see anywhere where that uh, batch script that I submitted is. So that tells me that it's done already. I've also received an email notification telling me that it was done. So if I, so now I can check the results of that script I've submitted. So I'm going to clear this and I'm going to type ls. And as we can see here, there's an output file that has given me from this shell file that I've submitted. So if I want to read this output file, I can type cat and then slurm dash 289250.out. And those are the results that I had from before. Two random generated matrices with a product of the multiplied matrices. Um, so that's a little bit about how to use Slurm um, interactively and non-interactively.